Azimut have a long reputation of building some really stylish flybridge boats. And behind me here is the latest example in that line. This is the all new Azimut 72 Fly. Now, with any luck, we'll actually get a chance to sea trial it. But first up, let's have a really good look all around inside and out and make sure we see everything there is to see. Now, this is an, an Alberto Mancini design. He's a very well-known Italian exterior stylist. He's done a fantastic job over the last few years of creating some really stylish looking boats. But this is actually the first one with a new interior. Uh, they used to be designed by a chap called uh, Salvagnier Achille, and, uh, sorry, Achille Salvagnier, and now they have uh, moved on to a new designer called Fabio Fantolini. So let's have a good look and see exactly what there is to find out. quick look first of all on the bathing platform it has been raining overnight so everything's a little bit damp but first up we'll just have a quick peek down we have got a crew cabin down here and you can see we've got a couple of beds we've got one in here behind a curtain and one tucked away in a separate cabin there is also a washing machine down here a small heads compartment it's a wet room really, you can see there's got a teak grate for the shower head and there is access to the engine room in here. Don't know if that is sealed, nope. It's going to be reasonably warm because the boat has just been out testing. We've got a pair of man 1400 horsepower V12 engines by the looks of things. They are on straight shaft drives, very traditional flybridge arrangement. Generators at the stern, good distance back from the hull, so relatively shallow shaft angles should make for a nice efficient ride and keep the weight forward for a sensible flat trim. Got fuel tanks, fuel filters, one each side. Very sensible layout. Right, let's Go up top, start to make our way through the boat. Now, under here we have got some really handy deck level storage. Uh, maybe, I'm not quite sure if there's room for a life raft in there, but certainly you can get some safety gear in there. Just handy deck storage. Passerelle, letterbox style, all retracts into there. We've got access up both sides. We'll go up this side for the moment. Shore power cable in there. Shower in there. And that looks like that's the Cable Master 2. So Looks like you've got two access points for the shore power. That's very neat. So locker for the stern lines, you can tuck the tail ends of the way of the rope so they're not hanging loose on the deck. Got winches to pull yourself in, side gates on both sides. Always good to see. So you can jump out either side. Lovely big sofa. Some interesting curves going on here at both ends. The designer has tried to introduce a really balanced design, so trying to use some architectural shapes, some softer shapes with the furniture. Wet bar on the corner here, that's always good to see, so you can wash your hands if you get them dirty handling ropes. But we've also got an ice maker, so you can help yourself to a few drinks without having to pop inside. A bit more storage under the stairs, shoes and things. And nice to see a third helm station down here. So when you're coming alongside in the Mediterranean, you have got just the 
joystick control and the thrusters, but the joystick will actually control all the engines for you, so no need to have separate throttles there. Now it looks like the crew are cleaning the decks, so we'll have a look around that perhaps later. Let's go up and have a quick look at the flybridge. Key part of any flybridge boat is obviously the flybridge itself, and this is an absolute cracker. Really, really long, very nice and open, and I love all these light colours. So we've got a glass transom area or balustrade, so you get an uninterrupted view out. Very attractive teak-based furniture, custom made to fit this yacht, so it all fits perfectly with the shape, the angles. Lovely relaxed area, big deep comfy cushions. Hard top overhead. Nice to see that this is nice bright colours too, so it actually feels even on a slightly overcast day like today, it's really nice and bright. We've got glass panels overhead. So again, lets a bit of light in, but you can be shaded when you want to. Couple of sun pads, to, sun pads to stretch out on at the stern. Big dining area. This will be where most people end up eating, certainly during the daytime. So good to see a healthy sized table. That doesn't fold or anything, but then when you've got this much space, it doesn't really need to. You can afford to have a fixed table. Some interesting design details going on here, just a sort of change of grain, adds a bit of visual interest to it. Lots of sociable seating around the helm position, just about long enough to lie facing either way. You've got a headrest this end, you've got a backrest this end. I think that's a neat idea actually, because you've got the windscreen angled away from you here. It does mean that when you lie down, you can get really proper protection from the apparent breeze. Nice thin struts so it doesn't block your view. And a helm station over on the starboard side. Hopefully we'll get a chance to drive that. But bolstered seats so you can stand or sit. Looks like you have got reach adjustment too. So you can pull them forwards and backwards. Always good to see. Useful storage for bits and bobs right next to it. A couple of small cup holders, thrusters, joystick. Very neat. Right, let's make our way back down through. Crew hard at work, but beautiful flush fitting side glass. Flybridge extends out over the top, provides a little bit of extra protection as you make your way along. We've got cut out bulwarks, so get a bit of a view through, but good protection from these hip high rails. We can just briefly squeeze past, thank you. Couple of steps up to the foredeck. And a lovely sunbathing area up here. Look at that, again, more of those lovely curves. Teak table, you can put your drinks on, plenty of space to stretch out. Sometimes these areas can feel a little bit cramped, but there's plenty of space to move around here. It looks like these backrests fold up. I don't think I can do that one-handed, but you can see that that is a tiltable headrest. So you can use it as a seat in this position or tilt the whole thing up and then have a bit of support if you're lying out on the sun pads. Now the deck itself slopes slightly down, probably just to improve visibility, honestly, to, uh, to be honest. It actually works rather well, it doesn't feel dangerously slopey, but should also make sure that the deck drains neatly. And there are good deep tow rails, so it always feels like you're nice and secure with your feet. You're not gonna lose your footing there. Big, chunky, looks like an ultra anchor. I can't be sure, but it looks like it. All the controls so you can operate the windlass with your feet. Sensibly sighted cleats. That one's already in use. And really good, sturdy bow rails. And good to see that all three of these are solid stainless steel rather than wire. So it feels very nice and secure. It only turns into wire back at this level. Let's go back round. It looks like we've got a couple of nice deck lights indeed. Those pop up, provide a little bit of illumination at night. And I think those are pole support. So you could stretch a canopy over here and provide a bit more shade 
if it's really too hot in the midday sun. Right, work our way back. Crew hard at work, polishing it all up. Do you mind if I just squeeze by? Thank you very much. Right, it's getting a little bit busy, but we'll see if we can start the tour. So, very nice seating area. We, we have just been out at sea, so it looks like the cushions are still a little bit waiting to be rearranged, but lovely low level seating all around the stern section. And it's interesting, rather than using matching furniture everywhere, there's just a little bit of visual interest again. So we've got the sort of cream colored shape colors and shapes over here, a little bit of leather detailing on the armrest. And over this side, it's more of a sort of tan, slight milky coffee colored one, slightly different shaping again, adds visual interest. We've got some useful storage for glasses here, little mini fridge down there. So there's a bar area inside and really handy to have that right next to the cockpit too. So if you are sat outside, you don't have to make your way through to galley. Very smart, they're very good at this kind of detailing azimuth. There's always perfectly fiddled places for every single cup and glass. Now, there is a high-low TV behind here. We can probably demonstrate that. See, there's a good-sized TV screen that pops up from there. I won't go all the way, you get the idea. Fairly commonplace these days but it does mean it hides away discreetly and doesn't spoil the view when you're just wanting to enjoy the natural surroundings of the sea. Now, permanent fixed table as you come forward. This is, in fact, a solid marble table. Again, no sort of folding leaves or extending parts. There's enough space to have it permanently set up. Some really cool lighting features overhead, just hanging down. Lots of interesting detailing going on rather attractive sort of pale blue suede covered freestanding chairs, but plenty of space. Certainly sit six very comfortably indeed, but you could probably get eight round there. Just make a little bit of space. And then a really interesting galley design over on the port side. Now a lot of use, there's no super shiny surfaces. The designers have deliberately kept it all matte so that it doesn't show fingerprints and it looks like it means to be used. It's not one of these boats that are so smart you daren't actually touch anything. Really interesting lighting design there. And you can see this has got sort of fins running along there. It's just a styling feature, but again, adds a bit of tactile and visual interest. Very smart galley design using this bronze finish. Plenty of storage space. I always find it a little bit irritating that they don't have handles on all the doors, but they are easy enough to open if you just slot your fingers in there. Full size fridge freezer, or full height one at least. Pretty decent size for a 72 footer. Very smart matte black sink. Plenty more storage. I think we've got a dishwasher over on this side. It's a half width dishwasher. Very smart spice rack that slides out. And it's also good to see that there's little cutouts behind here. So when you lift out that particular storage bin lid, it will stow away in this slot behind here. Also like to see that there is an opening window here. Really important when you are cooking, it just lets in a bit of fresh air. If there's any cooking smells, you can get a bit of ventilation through the boat close that up so it is a little bit damp outside. Now the other thing, it took me a while to find it, but I have always like to look where the sort of cutlery and crockery is stored. And this is so neatly integrated, it took me a while to spot it, but that actually opens up and you've got all your knives and forks very neatly arranged in there. And cutlery and crockery, it turns out, are on this side, under the helm seat, again, very important to have your little espresso mugs, this being an Italian boat. But also, you've got all your plates, side plates, soup bowls and everything very neatly stowed in there. Very sociable little 
corner seating unit right forward opposite the helm station. So when you are on passage, very happily have a couple of people sat over there facing forward or as a little breakfast bar area in the morning. Again, very nice, cozy little spot. Slightly elevated to get a terrific view. Access to all the breaker switches in there. And a handy storage unit for charts or pilot books and the like. Not quite a one piece windscreen. We've got two pieces with a central mullion there. Don't think that's gonna get in the way too much when you're sat at the helm. Got a pretty good view all the way around. Nice big corner windows here. Again, and actually that mullion narrows as it comes down. So again, just minimizes obstruction when you're looking forward. Helm door next to it, so very easy access to the side decks. Joystick control that obviously manages the engines and the steering and uses these bow and stern thrusters to sync everything up and means you can just, coming alongside, you can just do it all from the joystick. This looks like a relatively small plotter screen. It is a bit of a reach from the helm chair. When you're actually sat here, you are going to have to lean quite a long way forward to touch that. It feels more natural standing. You probably can get to everything when you're stood. But let's carry on down into the lower deck. Lovely white fabric, keeps things nice and bright. And because you've got the windscreen overhead, you've got all the natural light flooding down. Now let's turn around and go to the to starboard side. Here we've got a twin cabin. And actually for a twin, that's a really decent size. The beds are suitably generous width, good size hull windows, plenty of storage up above them, hanging locker in here. And behind the door there is an ensuite. So I think all the cabins have their own ensuite bathrooms. And very smart they are too. More use of this matte, dark walnut colour. Nice warm lighting, recessed. Loo in the corner. And then teak line shower. And bear in mind, this is the smallest of the guest cabins. That's a really very decent size. And certainly extremely stylish. Right. Always like to see an opening porthole. Nothing like fresh air, air conditioning is all very well, but personally I prefer a bit of fresh air whenever you can. Now moving forward through the yacht, on the port side we've got a double guest cabin. Now this is not the VIP, but it's really good to see that there is space for a second guest cabin. The bed is angled a little bit, so you, it's not quite full width, but it is a decent width up at the sleeping end or the head end. Big hull window still, storage overhead more hanging lockers, and this has its own ensuite access to a bathroom, but this is actually the bathroom that doubles as the day head. But again, that's dark wood, just gives it slightly more sort of intimate, warm, subtle lighting. Frankly, let's face it, we need a bit of subtle lighting sometimes. <laughs> but. This is the Jack and Jill access I mentioned earlier. So you've got ensuite access from that double cabin, or you can access it from this lobby area here as you're making your way forward. And then into the VIP cabin, in the bow. And even here, we've got good size hull windows. So lots of natural light right the way through the lower deck. Decent sized double bed. Sorry about the flickering. I just can't seem to kill it with any setting at the moment. But Big hanging locker, illuminates when you open the door. Reading lights and sockets by the bed exactly where you need them. Lots of little storage trays to put your phone and watch and so on. Another hanging locker on this side. And of course, the ensuite bathroom for the VIP. That's rather nice to see. A wooden handle on that pull out drawer. Now this is not marble, this is a, a sort of composite stone. Just means it's a little bit lighter, easier to look after, won't stain so easily and so on. Very stylish touch detailing. And a really good, oh, just the lock on that 
shower. And again, that same teak bulkhead in the shower, and teak grating underfoot with a black tap detailing, and a big overhead rain shower. Right, with any luck, the owner's cabin will now be free for us to go and have a bit of a look. There are a few changes in level, you see, as you work your way through the boat, a few different steps. But that's inevitable if you're gonna get the headroom that you want, and there is really good headroom in this cabin. That's gotta be pretty close to seven foot above me there. But look at the detailing here. Even here, we've got these lovely teak strips and inset recessed lighting. Good size, must be a king size bed that just below knee height, really decent sized mattress thickness. And here's some unusual detailing, little flash of color, and suddenly we've got some angles in this sideboard unit. That looks more like a natural stone finish there. Good size hull windows, drop down blinds, see the air conditioning vents up here but really interesting mix of colors and finishes and surfaces and curves. Works really well. Smart headboard with these leather strap detailing, linen lights, walk-in wardrobe on the port side, bit of hanging space, lots of drawers with little leather tag handles, very smart. Again, all lights up when you open the door. Television hit, hidden behind this mirrored screen. Again, keeps things nice and discreet. And a Bose subwoofer speaker down there, or a sound bar, I think they call them. Little hidden recesses and storage places. Lovely little kind of chaise long day bed, but that also doubles as a vanity unit. That just drops down, all soft clothes, of course. Opening ports set in those hull windows. And then very stylish ensuite bathroom. I think this is a real highlight. Twin sinks, little teak grating in between. Put your tooth mug on. Lovely little recessed spots for keeping lotions and potions. More storage behind the mirror. And then that lovely warm teak shower. Really, oh, we've got the lock on up there. So I do like the way that they are, they do think of how the boat is actually gonna be used. So even when it is in a bit of a rough sea, you can always secure everything. Rain shower overhead, teak bulkhead pull-out shower there, little recessed units, again for your shower gel or shampoo. And the loo discreetly tucked next to it. So, impressive four cabins, all en suite, plus crew cabins. This lovely main deck saloon lots of light pouring in. That is the all new Azimut 72. I hope you've enjoyed looking around it. Always interested to hear what you think. Please do give us some comments in the notes below. So thank you very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.